Burnout and optometry is very real. Kia ora, my name is Siobhan. I'm an optometrist working at Aotearoa New Zealand. I've worked as an optometrist for six years now. In this video, I'm going to be talking about burnout and optometry. Now, before we continue, I'm just going to canvas the video. I just want to say that if you're going through any psychological distress, please see a medical professional or a professional of that type as soon as possible. This video will be touching on those sorts of areas. I also want to say that this video is not going to be an anti-corporate tirade, but I do want to say that with capitalism, corporations can grow to a massive size. They can grow to such a big size that people like us, being so small, we don't have a voice. Um, with businesses, they can create whatever narrative they want about the workplace. But the reason I'm making this video is I really want to publicize an issue in optometry where this issue is only going to get worse. I also want to say that this is not only happening in optometry, it's happening in physiotherapy, it's happening in dentistry, it's happening in pharmacy as well and perhaps many other professions as well. I'll be talking about optometry because of course I'm an optometrist but if you're in any sort of allied healthcare I'd really urge you to comment your experience down below in the comments. Now let's continue on with the video. So before I started optometry, I always thought optometrists had a low stress job because one, they worked fixed hours and with the job, it was really easy to disengage from work when you went home. Because once you're done seeing the patients, you can switch off and go home and enjoy the rest of your life. But recently talking to friends and even with myself, burnout has become a really big issue. And to couple that, last year in March, there was a wellbeing survey performed by Queensland University of Technology in Australia and Leeds Beckett University in the United Kingdom. It's unfortunate this paper was hidden by a paywall, but I bought the rights to view this paper. I'd encourage you to view the paper if you have the means. I mean, there are always workarounds. I won't bore you too much with the details, but what was most interesting was when the respondents were able to give comments about why they felt that they were burnt out or why their mental well-being was going downhill. So what the survey involved, it was a mental health questionnaire that was sent out to optometrists in Australia. Of the 6,217 registered and working optometrists on Australia, there were 505 respondents. And with the study, what was found quantitatively was that there was a greater prevalence of psychological distress and mental health conditions in optometrists compared to other professions and professions in the healthcare industry. So that means my initial thoughts that optometry was a low stress career was actually wrong. Now what was also found was optometrists under 30 or young optometrists, and I'm really sorry if that offends anyone, um, the young optometrists were found to have more burnout or symptoms of burnout compared to older optometrists or optometrists above the ages of 30. And it was also found that optometrists who were female had more symptoms of burnout than optometrists who were male. So you can see the real risk group is females under 30 who are optometrists. I think this is alarming that younger optometrists are burning out more than older optometrists. Now it's not explicitly mentioned in the paper, but I hypothesize that with the intervention of corporates, which was about 10 years ago in Australia, there are more younger optometrists working for corporates than there are older optometrists. Corporate type of optometry has a higher workload, therefore it leads to burnout. So you could say that the corporate environment has some responsibility for the burnout we're seeing in young optometrists here today. And I just want to further this point as well. From my experience as a graduate optometrist or someone who was just about to graduate with optometry, there was a sense of job scarcity. And on top of that, we're very naive at this stage we're very impressionable so what corporates will do is they'll host dinners they'll host galas they'll host events and they'll have entire teams dedicated to hiring students before they've graduated so you can imagine being a student who's not well versed in how to read contracts or negotiate or the job market or the job space and there's also a worry that you've got friends maybe doing other degrees who haven't got jobs who have to go back to work so if you're able to sign early sign before you graduate it's taken as a badge of honor and also what corporates will do is they'll provide a bond or a payment up front for signing like a signing bonus and once you sign that contract the bond means that you have to work for that place for two years or you've got to pay back the bond which locks in the student further so the corporates will get in early to do their hiring, then the independent optometrists will jump in and do their hiring. And what tends to happen is independent optometrists tend to hire people with experience, or they'll even hire people after they graduated where people are quite worried they want to get jobs straight out of university. And this is why younger optometrists tend to work with corporates, because one, they've got more jobs and they can nab them a bit quicker. So those are kind of like my hypotheses and theories, but what the study did really well was not only get a, a quantitative measure, but they got a qualitative assessment too. They actually asked the respondents to give feedback or specific reasons why they getting burnout and it's really important to get that qualitative measure because burnout is very complex you can't simplify it to certain numbers that's why these interviews or these comments are really important and so with these comments the authors were able to break down the reasons of burnout into 10 components and the most common were retail and healthcare own mental health workload 
and career dissatisfaction. The biggest issue, which wasn't really a surprise, was retail versus healthcare. One participant mentioned, I've become an increasingly anxious person outside of my job as well as in my job. As a result of the short appointments and full book and go, 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 rush nature of my corporate optometry job, I feel devalued in my job. It's never about clinical expertise or patient care. It's all about conversion and sales. Another issue was one's own mental health, but I really think this is corporate optometry applying that pressure. This participant said, now not feeling stressed, but had had problems a few years ago when working in corporate optometry where never ending workloads did cause stress related problems. I was able to immediately stop this by walking out of the practice that day and few sessions with a local psychologist were very beneficial for me. Now there's also been mention of workload. I often feel like I will burn out of my job. The main issue for me is the need to push patients according to pack schedule. I also find it hard to keep physically healthy when there's often not enough time to go to the bathroom or eat your lunch properly and this has downstream effects on your mental health. Not only this, there's also career dissatisfaction. This work gets me down more than I would ever expected. However, I feel locked into this profession as I cannot think of what else I could do. Sometimes I wish I had never th even thought of doing optometry, but in all honesty, what else is there for someone like me? So this comment was really heartbreaking to put all your soul into one thing and then realize that you regret doing it or it's something that you can't pivot off in the future. So with this particular person, I don't know if you're watching, but I really hope you do find happiness and something fulfilling. And I do think what you've done was never a waste of time and it's gonna be useful to you somewhere in the future. I believe optometry does have skills that are transferable to other careers. And here's a few about workplace relationships. There have been situations at work where my manager was borderline abusive towards staff and customers. They created a lot of stress at work. And here's another one. There is no adequate or genuine place for grievances to take place for close to burnout staff. And finally, here's one about being isolated, which I do feel at times being an optometrist and you're kind of the only person making the decisions. As an optometrist, you rely primarily on your own decision making and a lot of what you do goes on in your head. You often have nobody else to bounce your thoughts off. This can often make me feel isolated. And we have to remember that optometry is a patient facing role. Patients can be a source of stress. And here's what one participant had to say. Being an incredibly retail field, despite technically being a health profession, makes the general public treat us worse than they would a doctor, for example. Another person said, patients and customers are more demanding than ever and have ever increasing expectations. They come armed with a little bit of knowledge and think it's enough to devalue what you stand for and what you do. So classic Dunning Kruger, I can pretty much say most optometrists or if you work in any profession, you've dealt with those in the past and they're annoying. There are many other examples and snippets there, so I do really encourage you to read the paper. Um, some of the other ones include professional responsibilities. I guess when you're a business owner, you have a lot more decisions to make on top of seeing patients. And another mention too was workplace environment. So for example, if you're a contractor working at multiple places, the ergonomics may not be set up the best way possible for you. And in optometry, you need to work in a dark room with no windows, so there's always going to be lack of natural lighting. Now, I really want to say this was an excellent paper. There's only one paper, so it'd be nice to have multiple papers and maybe do a meta analysis as well. Now, it's not all doom and gloom there are steps we can take to combat burnout. Now firstly, I really want to mention that I'm no mental health expert, so I really encourage you to see one if you are experiencing any of these signs of burnout like we mentioned earlier in this video. But I think the first step is to realize that burnout is real. It's really important to determine if you have burnout and to also realize that burnout is multifactorial. It's not as simple as we think it is. Now, if you don't want to see a professional, there are ways where you can just take time off work, reduce your working hours, make sure you're eating healthy, you're sleeping well, you're getting physical activity and good exercise, you're seeing people and you have a good friend circle. Also really determine that you're having hobby outside of work so that gives you areas to de-stress in your life and hobbies make life interesting and something you can work towards and get better at. Realize that optometry is more than selling glasses and if you're at a particular workplace that isn't making you happy you aren't married to the place you do have the option to leave. Another thing I like to encourage people is look into specialization like low vision, glaucoma, advanced contact lenses, myopia control. And for this last point I really speak about my own personal experience. Ask yourself why you started optometry. For me, I didn't have a really strong passion doing optometry. I was really trying to get into medicine and that didn't work out, so I settled for optometry. So even right now, I'm at a crossroad to see if I want to continue on doing optometry, but I'm also trying different things, hence this YouTube video, hence creating content. I hope this video was useful to you. Here's a video about my likes and dislikes in optometry to watch next. Other than that, thanks for watching. Take care, stay focused, and talk soon.